Here's a quick example showing what we can do with Microsoft Excel. And this example is about AC power. So to start off with, we've got some data here with voltage and current and power factor. So I'm just going to quickly make a formula for our apparent power. So you can see I'm doing a mix of typing and selecting with the mouse and use enter to put in the to save the formula that I've created. I can carry on doing more of these formulas as well. And if I want to do some Pythagoras, like a triangle, you can do values that are raised to a power, like this one squared, this one squared, and now I've realized that I need to put a square root function in here. So either I could do raising everything to a power of a half, or you'll see in the bottom left corner at the moment it says enter, so that's one I can use for uh, selecting cells. I'll hit F2, it changes to edit, and I can use the cursor to move around in here. So now I've got the cursor at the start of that function, I'll just put in SQRT, so that tells it that I want to do a square root. There's my calculation done. Don't need so much uh, decimals with that one to make it a little bit nicer. And for the next part, I'll just carry on with the apparent power based on the real power in this new power factor. Dividing them, and I'll round that off as well. And the current. And because I've already done a formula for working out Q based on S and P, I'm going to grab this formula that I've got here before. You can see up in the top it shows you the formula with the square root and the squares of the other parts. Copy and paste that into here. So at the moment I just said F2 to let me edit this formula, or you can double click on it. It shows me which data I'm using for that formula, but the way that I've reorganized this now it's not actually the right way, so I'm just going to drag that blue one up to the right place. No, the blue one should actually be the S value down here, and the pinky reddish one should be the value for P. So I can drag that one to there to adjust that formula without having to retype the whole thing. So it's shown me pretty quickly what I've got with my change in the Q value which has been caused by my capacitor. So I'll just quickly work out the difference between those ones. And if I want to use all of these formulas again with a new set of data, say over here, if I wanted to have 0 0.95 as my target value, one of the things that I can do, if I double click here to edit, I want to make sure that the new values that I'm going to put in are always going to refer back to these bits of data at the top of the page. So I can do that by hitting F4 on the keyboard, and you'll see it brings up these dollar signs. I'll do that to the other one as well. I'll use Control Enter to finish doing that and leave the same cell selected. Copy, and I'll paste that over to here. And you can see it's kept using the same data points that I had before. With the power one, I'll copy that across, and it's gone to zero. Uh-oh. But we can fix that because it's trying to use an empty cell, but it should be using this one over here, so I'll fix that up. And turn that back to an F4, so that's an absolute reference. And the blue one here is a, what you call a relative reference, because any time you move it, it's going to move where it's referring to. So that's a couple of the basic features about ways to work with formulas, which will hopefully make life a little bit easier for you when you're using Microsoft Excel.